Ah, the CRT effect, you know, good old reliable, great effect, super popular. You see it in a lot of different places, but there hasn't really been a great method of doing it in DaVinci Resolve that is until now. So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create a realistic and physically accurate CRT screen effect in DaVinci Resolve. And here's an example of what we're gonna be making. Quick disclaimer before we jump in, uh, this does use a plugin to do a bulk of the effect, although we are gonna be using a mix of this paid plugin and free plugins that are within Resolve. Now the plugin is my own, it's CRT emulation. You can find it on chromatica.co. You can find the link to pick up the plugin in the description and there's also a $10 off code there. So if you do wanna pick it up, there's $10 off. I wanna make it as accessible as possible. So. Uh, yeah, snag that plugin, install it, the instructions are in the plugin, and then hop over back to this video and we'll jump in. So without further ado, let's jump in. So we're gonna jump into a new project in DaVinci Resolve, uh, and we're gonna be working off of this sample clip that I made real quickly. It's just a simple scrambling of text with a little bit of manually keyframed uh, distortion with a little loading bar here. This is nothing crazy. I'm gonna have this available for download in the description. So if you wanna follow along with this exact clip, feel free to, otherwise you can throw whatever you want in. So before we jump in, it's worth noting that this is a graphically intensive plugin. This is not gonna get real-time playback. Even if you have a beefy computer, I'd be surprised if you get real-time playback. You might be tempted to drop your timeline resolution to compensate for that, but I highly recommend not doing that because if you were to set your timeline resolution to 720p, make this effect, make it look good, and then up your resolution whenever you're about to export back to 1080p or 4K, things change and it's not gonna look exactly like it looked whenever you were creating the effect. That being said, let's get started. Uh, we're gonna take this clip, drop it on our timeline, and I'm just gonna quickly separate this because we don't need the audio. And I'm gonna pick a frame that I think will be good to work on. This one looks great because we're getting some glitch and some the, the text is all clear. And we're going to go ahead and put the CRT effect on this clip. Now off the bat, this looks like doo-doo and that's okay. That looks bad. To get started though, we're gonna go ahead and go over to the fusion effects tab in our inspector when this clip is selected and we're gonna just zero everything out so we have a clean slate to start with. Now the first section you're gonna wanna start off with when you're developing a look is the CRT grid section. This directly affects the actual pixel grid that is being emulated by this effect. Now you can increase this if you want a lower pixel density screen where the pixels get huge and everything kind of looks lower resolution, or you can go smaller and make it look higher resolution, but the pixels are super small and you can, it gets so small to a point where you can't even see it's happening. And you might also get some more issues. So for this, I know a good point to live at is at 0.9. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in 0.9 here. There are other parameters here that you can adjust. Uh, for this specific tutorial, we're not gonna touch any of them, but they are there for you to play around with if you choose to. From the CRT grid, let's go to the pixel grid section. Now in CRT screens, there are never these sharp edges, kind of the, you know at these perpendicular corners on the R and the other letters. That doesn't exist on CRT screens. So what we're gonna wanna do is adjust the pre-blur amount, which if I exaggerate it here to show you what it's doing, it softens the edges of our text so that it looks more realistic. It's, it's more soft, it's not as sharp because these, again, these CRT screens were not sharp displays. This is old technology. So for here, I'm gonna put it at 1.2. That gives us nice softer edges without making it look like, you know, it's too blurry and we're losing actual detail in what we're showing. Next, we'll pop over to the light bleed section. And what this emulates is the gradient from a lit pixel to a pixel that is not lit. So we can adjust that here with the pre-glow size. And if I exaggerate it to show you what it's doing, you'll see that it'll increase a lot of that fall off. This is obviously not good, it looks washed out. So let's drop it back down. I'm gonna put it at 1.9. From there, I'm gonna increase ever so slightly the pre-glow amount to 0.87. And what that's gonna do is increase the exposure of our graphic just a little bit because it does get darker when we add the grid. Next, to add more character into our emulation here, let's pop over the chroma tab. And what this does is add chromatic aberration. And we can do that by just adding another zero and a one, hitting enter, and then just using our arrow keys to gradually increase the effect because this is a very touchy effect. I wouldn't recommend just you know sliding this wheel or putting in like two because it goes crazy. Yeah, like this is absurd. <laughs> So let's go back to 1.005. And for this graphic, I know that 1.006 is a great spot. You can see here on the edges, 
get some nice chromatic aberration, some blue on the right, red and yellow on the left, and it just adds some character to this. Now where the sauce gets put in is post glow. Now post glow adds additional brightness to this and it just makes it look a lot nicer. So to start, we're gonna grab our threshold high parameter here and we're just gonna slowly drop it. And as we drop it, it's actually gonna lower the threshold that's required before it starts to apply the, the gain and the glow. And I'm gonna drop it all the way down to, let's do 0.122. It adds a lot of brightness and it adds some glow you can see here. And it just looks really cool, it looks sci-fi. You can adjust the color here if you want a yellow look, you can put yellow, if you want red, you can go red. But for this, what I want is a nice kind of whitish blue, kind of a sci-fi look. So I'm gonna choose blue and just kind of pull this color picker a little bit over to the blue side so we get a little bit more blue put in there and it looks sci-fi and clean. Then because the glow is kind of very well, it's very concentrated in the center of the frame, I'm gonna increase the fall off, the post glow fall off just a little bit to kind of even out the spread of the glow. And then to compensate for the drop in exposure, I'm gonna boost up the post glow gain just a little bit. This is looking great. We get a little bit of clipping here. It's a little bit too bright. So I'm actually gonna reduce that back down to six. And that looks awesome. Now from here, you could be done. You could think this is great and just run with this and that's totally fine. I think we can add a little bit more sauce here. So from here, we need to add effects prior to the CRT emulation itself because we want to process the images rather than this look. This look is the last effect in the pipeline. So what we're going to do is use this fusion button right here to go into the fusion node graph. So then we can start adding effects before the CRT node. So the first thing I want to add here is analog damage. So I'm going to hit shift space, type in analog, and add an analog damage node. Now I'm going to hit two with this node selected so it solos it. And we can actually get real time playback when it's just soloed. In my opinion, a great place to start is with clean VHS. And then just go to the scan drop down, and I want to increase the image aspect all the way so we get all of our image back. So what this is going to do is it's going to add a VHS look to our graphic so that before it goes into our CRT emulator, it's already looking older. It's gonna, it's really gonna complement the CRT effect itself nicely. So if I go back and click on the CRT emulator and hit two, you can see here that it's going to add more of a kind of vintagey look. So if I drag this out, you'll see it before and after. In my opinion, it really starts to pull it together. Now a little bit, it's a little bit too bright here and that's easy to, to offset. If we make sure our analog damage node is selected, we can go to color dials and just drop the brightness just a little bit. Then I'm gonna to go to the VHS setting and just increase the restless foot jitters a little bit more so that whenever it's playing, there's a little bit of a jitter. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. See the jitter down here. Let's reduce the offset. There, nice. Let's reduce the jitter now. Get a little bit of a... Uh, There, yeah, that looks nice. I really like where this is at now. And it's important to note that if you, you need to look at this in full screen to get the full effect because the way screen technology works, your monitor uh, might be showing some array artifacts or it, it just kind of looks very patterned. The CRT grid looks very patterned here and that's just because it's condensed down to this small area. So you can go back over the edit page and then hit P to look at it in full screen and it, you lose the pattern look, the moray, it looks a lot better here. So back in the node graph, I do wanna drop the blacks just a little bit. I think they're a little bit too boosted. I don't really like that look. So what I'm gonna quickly add is a curves node here. I'm gonna add color curves and I'm just gonna click this bottom anchor and pull it in just a little bit. So our blacks get a little bit more black. Then going back to the CRT node, I'll hit two to see our changes. And I like that a lot. So if I pull this out, you'll see the difference. That looks nice. In my opinion, it just makes it all look a little bit more vintage, a little bit older, just a little bit cooler, there's more character to it. How else can we improve this effect? Well, we can add a lens distortion because these screens were very curved. If you remember the old CRT screens, they were super curved and it was like this thick piece of glass. Honestly, in my opinion, these, this effect isn't complete without that curve. So what we're gonna do is click on the CRT emulator node, hit shift space and click lens distortion. Make sure it is the, this lens distortion here, hit add and hit two and click on the lens distortion node, hit two to solo it, make sure that's what's in here in our viewer and we can start to make adjustments here. So I want this to be kind of a, a heavier distortion. So I'm gonna drop this value here so we get that nice curvature and I'm gonna adjust the edge behavior to reflect. And what that does is that reflects our image so you don't get the alpha like we saw before 
it fills it in so it's to reflect. Even with the edge behavior sent to reflect, we don't want to show this much of kind of the, the way it's wrapping our image. So what we're going to do is make sure the lens distortion is selected, hit shift space, type in transform node, and scale in the size so that we start to lose that and our graphic fills more of our screen. Make sure again that with the transform node selected, hit two so that we can actually see the changes in our viewer as we make them. And just gonna zoom in here just a little bit. That looks nice. Now, if you do see kind of a seam here, if I can see, yeah, there's a little bit of a seam here in the bottom right corner where you can see where it's reflecting the edges. If you wanna get rid of that, what you can do is make is uh, add another transform node and put that before the lens distortion and increase it just a smidge and you'll lose it. So we'll go right there and you lose that seam. Now from here to really just tie this all together, let's add some noise, a little bit of grain because uh, this is a grungy effect. We just want to tie it together with a little bit of grain. Now you could use different types of grain. I'm going to use the film grain. We're going to be using uh, this one here, this specific film grain. Enter, make sure you press two when it's selected. And I'm gonna choose 35 millimeter, 400 tungsten. Zoom in so I can see what's actually happening. I'm gonna increase the opacity here and you can see this grain. I think that just add, this just ties it all together. So that is essentially the end of this effect. Now you can do a lot of cool things from here. You can continue to add effects. You could add like lens dispersion, stuff like that. Uh, for example, if we added lens reflections and put that before right here. You could get some cool effects, um, but it's it's up to you what you want to do from here. So yeah, I mean, the sky's really the limit with what you want to do. You can continue to add more effects and dial it in based on what you want. You could add some a little bit of color correcting to this. It's, it's really up to you, but the base of the effect is what I've just shown you here. So there you have it, guys. This is a really cool effect. Uh, and I think the plugin really opens up a lot of possibilities within Resolve because there's a lot of different places you can take this. You don't have to do exactly what I did. There's a lot of room for customization. Uh, so if you do pick it up and you do start messing around and make something dope, let me know. I'd love to showcase you on Chromatica and just showcase you in general. I really like it when, you know, people use these plugins to do cool stuff that I didn't even think of. And if there's anything else you guys think are lacking in Resolve, let me know. I'll be sure to tackle that. I got some really cool stuff coming on Chromatica that I'm excited to share here. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.